for those of you who don't much care for the gun rights conversation, stop watching now. This is going to be part of it. A while back, Thunderfoot and DPR Jones had a debate uh, with some other people on gun control, and I thought I would play a little bit of that and talk about it. Or should, should I be required to retreat and call the police from a safe area? These are case-specific instances. Exactly. I want to rush to agree with Thunderfoot. Every incident that happens, be, I mean, just pick any sphere you'd want, whether it's a car crash or an industrial accident or a shooting or a stabbing or a burglary, in all of these things are case-specific. There will be particular and unique facts that attend each case, and each one has to be evaluated on the facts that are unique and particular to it. However, when you're talking about gun control, you're talking about altering what particular and unique facts can exist. That is to say that if you disarm a citizen, a perfectly law-abiding citizen, who's responsible and owns a firearm, say me, is, for some reason I've been disarmed, and someone breaks into my house, the only person you've disadvantaged there is me. Well, the only one you've necessarily disadvantaged. Uh, the criminal may well not have a firearm or a weapon of any type, which is just my good fortune. He or she may well have a firearm or a weapon of some type, which is my misfortune. And given that you've now taken away from me one of the tools that I could use in my little quip, my little arsenal to resist this uh, violent intrusion, you have altered the parameters of that such that I'm now vulnerable in a way that I was not before. If, it, if, if <clears throat> it's justified, then, yeah, I mean, th th there are... Yes, so if it's justified, if deadly force were justified in the situation I posited, the burglar breaking in, and I've been disarmed, the fact that it's justified does me no good, whatever, and as much as I no longer have a handgun to be able to use to shoot and kill, or shoot and injure, or shoot and scare away, or brandish and scare away, that, uh, that bad, bad evildoer. So, sure, if it's justified, and I have a firearm, all to my, my, my good, that works to my advantage. If it's justified and you've disarmed me, it's a perfectly meaningless thing to say, well, it would have been justified. Unfortunately, he's dead. He didn't have a gun to use it, but it would have been justified if he did. <laughs> Thanks. Justifications where you could uh, you know, justify anything up to terminating the guy's life, right? Okay. But these are case-specific. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to get a better gauge of where you stand on this. So if my window is open and I have a diamond ring sitting on the table, and a guy just walks by, reaches his arm in, and says, hey, I'm taking this. Now, this example is rather contrived. Uh, first of all, you have a diamond ring that you've set upon a table, which you put near a window that you've in turn opened, such that if someone walks by, they can just... <laughs> and take your... Okay, well, whatever. And he walks away with it, and I'm not in any danger. Do you think it should be illegal for me to punch him or run outside and chase him and grab him physically to gain my property back. Do you think that should be illegal? Uh, well, I mean, uh, again, this actually does matter on what sort of society that you're living in, what the baseline of crime is. I just want to know what if, you think. Actually, Thunderfoot, that's not correct. It doesn't matter what the baseline of crime is where I live. It only matters what's true about that particular situation. As you mentioned earlier, it's case specific. No other cases are relevant in the evaluation of that particular case. Now, the guy does give you, a rather, as I mentioned, a rather contrived example, but accepting the hypothesis and taking the facts is true that there, ex <laughs> there exists someone who has a diamond ring, sets it on the table, puts an, you know, that kind of thing. It is completely irrelevant if no other crime in the universe ever happens. What matters is, is this particular crime that is in fact happening, or hypothetically happening, uh, sufficient to justify the use of physical force? And if so, what, it, uh, what level? So you're just entirely wrong there about the baseline level of crime. Uh, the, the thing is that... Oh, or, or if you're right about that, then we can just uh, wash away any particular rape and say, well, you know, yeah, this one rape was bad, but the baseline level of crime in this region is not so bad. So, you know, it's a one-off thing and that wouldn't have... It, you, you see why it just doesn't work. If you are living in a very law-abiding society, um, where the guy is going to get, you know, you report the guy to the police, and he will get picked up within 24 hours, then Okay, first of all, there's a, a bit of an assumption there in what you're saying, Thunderfoot, and it is in that if you are in a reasonably law-abiding society that has a reasonably good law enforcement, or however you want to spin it, that 
the uh, a lot is contained in your if if they catch them in 24 hours if they recover your property irrespective of how law-abiding a society is and how well-intentioned the officers who serve that community happen to be how what how good their intentions are most of these types of things don't result in a, a net uh, positive to the victim you just can't investigate properly all these crimes and in fact uh, a very small fraction of burglaries are solved most people don't get their shit back uh, it's something like 20 to 25 percent of burglaries result in a, uh, a solved crime where they find the person who did it which says nothing whatever about the property uh, that they recover but where they actually get a suspect make an arrest and procure a conviction a lot of those you still don't get the property back because they've already sold it to someone else and then sometimes you you happen upon the property uh, from through other means the person who has it isn't the one who stole it they had no reason to know it was stolen nevertheless they have it and uh, so I, I, I don't actually know how that balances out I've never bothered to look <clears throat> just let the guy take the ring if you're living in something is almost a demilitarized zone where basically you are responsible for your own uh, possessions or whatever then by the way there is no state of affairs Thunderfoot real or hypothetical in which I fail to be responsible for me for my family and for my property no matter how good of a society I live in I retain the obligation to look out for myself look out for my kids my family my job all those th kinds of things so it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter one whit whether I live in South Korea or North Korea the United States or Afghanistan my responsibility to myself and my family and my property is exactly the same uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a way to actually um, uh, take a more proactive stance on these things. I, I don't understand that because if, if we were living in a, in a more law-abiding area, he probably wouldn't have taken the ring in the first place. That's precisely my point, that when people no, go against the, society, right? what if they don't find him? If, what if they can't find the ring? What if he sells it immediately? My, my point is protecting my own property. Do you think I should have the right legally and by right what I mean is not arrested for doing this do you believe I should have the right to become violent or physical with another human for taking property uh, I, I would say uh, if the guy is just going to take something uh, physically with strain maybe punch uh, doesn't seem appropriate if, okay then yeah, in, in other words there, there is this thing about using appropriate force okay appropriate force. So what if that same scenario is uh, someone who is a five foot uh, one 16 year old and this person that reaches in to grab the ring is seven foot four and 560 pounds and happens to be a wrestler. You know that's a little bit far-fetched the weight there uh, but there's a video I'll put a link to it here of a five foot tall police officer trying to take on down a guy who's about six eight <laughs> it's pretty amusing these two are definitely a mismatch so when she tries to slap on the cuffs it's no shock when goliath reveals he doesn't really fancy it after all and it's even less surprising that the policewoman has all the success and authority of your kid sister trying to stop his stealing her sweeties in then which case, you are better off actually going for the scenarios that we discussed earlier. The best thing that you have for self-defense in such circumstances is social structures of groups of people. Of course. The best defense you have for these types of things, social structures and groups of people. I don't even know what that is supposed to mean. Apparently, in all of these bad situations... Here's the kind of story that makes you say, yes. A trio of would-be burglars picked the wrong Albuquerque house to break into. Police say when the three teens pried open the door, a brave little girl was waiting for them, locked and loaded. Here's News 13's Maria Medina. I was holding it like this. Then four armed suspects caught on tape trying to break into a southwest side home. The homeowners own surveillance cameras helping deputies solve this case. News Force David Marino has this story. New attempt. The surveillance video captures it all. Four suspects, armed and dangerous, attempting to invade his southwest side home. The victim was able to get back inside his house, close his door, semi-barricade it, reach for a weapon that was easily accessible. That's when you hear gunfire. The four men retreat. Dave, there 
here's the home in question. It sits here on a fairly busy street. It's also the home that was targeted by three home invaders. Wrong house, wrong homeowner. Inside this Rays Valley home, a high stakes drama played out. Police got a 911 call from the owner who said three men had broken into his house. They confronted the homeowner, assaulted him briefly, and they put him in a closet. They didn't look in the closet because that's where he keeps his guns. Police in which there are home invasions. Your best defense was not to shoot the burglar. It's to have friends with you at all times or family members with you at all times. That sounds lovely. I don't know about you, but sometimes I get left at home like I was a year a while ago. Uh, I was home alone. Now I'm not. I don't know what, what you could possibly mean by this. I don't walk around with a posse of people who are sworn to protect me all times of the day. I'm not the president of the United States. I'm one, one monkey with one keyboard, and I'm trying to make do in life the very best that I can. And it does me no good whatever for you to say social structures and groups of people. Bull shit. In 2009, FBI put out a law enforcement bulletin. They do these uh, from time to time. And it, it does a, a study of... 2,123 police officers over, I think it was 12 years. And in those 12 years, there was something like 14 million some odd thousand priority responses, code three responses, the most important responses, of which 1,700, I think 17, but under 2,000 of those resulted in the call coming in, being heard by the dispatcher, relayed to the police officer, who in turn responded in an amount of time sufficient for their having shown up to have made any difference whatever. By the time they get there, almost all the time the crime is fully completed and the bad people are gone uh, in, in serious incidents. I'm not talking about like the the uh, supermarket parking lot where you have some like teenagers hanging out and drinking or whatever. I'm talking about important events. Weapons, uh, guns, knives, beatings, home invasions. The cops just do not show up. A store owner facing four robbers, two with guns, fought back and shot one of the men. He called 911, but after he waited and waited, police never came, and so he went home. Fox Force Natalie Solis in West Dallas tonight with more on how that story ended up. Natalie. Surveillance cameras from in and outside the store show four men, faces covered, pulling up and charging in. One with an assault rifle, the other with a pistol. One smacks an employee in the face, then holds the assault rifle to his head as he cowers on the ground. Behind the counter, a female employee, stunned, throws her arms up. A hand reaches around to grab cash from the register, but then a blast. The female employee is unharmed, but hits the deck anyway. The store's owner had grabbed his own weapon and opened fire. So, when you talk about case specific, the case specifics you need to evaluate are going to be ones very largely where it is a person is home alone or the small child who I don't think we can really count as part of the defense force and some person going through uh, coming into the home or you're there with your wife and kid and four guys come into your house what do you do then say wait a second my best defense here sir gentlemen is for you to wait for my friends to show up now I have a group of people with me that we can uh, detain you and then make use of the social structures. No. Investigators say three men with guns kicked their way into the front door of this house. Prince Edward County Sheriff Wesley Reed says the father at home protected himself and his baby son. Well, look, he was defending himself. The sheriff says the homeowner reached for his own gun. Shots were exchanged. Two of the intruders were killed. The best of... The best defense is a bullet in each one of their heads. By the way, you have to know when you're talking with me, you're talking with not, not a particularly rare case, but I'm one of the several million Americans who has had to actually use firearms in my own defense. And it doesn't make one whit of difference whether the threat to my life is a, a group of five teenagers who are really big, or uh, one cracked out meth head with a knife is coming after me, or a guy with a gun. The response is the same. Their ability to kill me exists. They mean to do me harm, which I presume when they're breaking into my house or cornering me in a parking lot or whatever happens to be, and I can guarantee you I'm going to do whatever's required to uh, equalize that particular situation. So that's 
if it's just the four four or five guys five guys in the parking lot that is a uh, well enough bullets until the uh, the remaining ones who aren't yet dead to get the message to go the fuck away like uh, this guy pumping his gas the officer from a couple weeks ago Remember this thing about groups. It works in two ways. The problem is, criminals are the ones who get to choose the conditions, the circumstances, and the time that they attack. You don't. You have to respond. So here they come with their little group because they understand the power of numbers. And uh, apparently on Thunderfoot's metric, this off-duty officer is trying to get gas. His best defense would be driving around with a car full of his buddies rather than reaching and withdrawing his firearm and putting a bullet in the, in the chest of the guy who has the weapon and watching the other two run away. That's something you need to take into your stride. In every violent encounter in which defense is going to, you know, uh, well, you're going to need to use force, the person who is attacked is always the person who did not get to choose the time, the conditions, and all of the parameters of that particular assault. The assailant does. So whatever it is you have with you, from moment to moment, is all that you have to make, make do with when you get through it. Uh, when guy came after me with a knife, scars of which I still have, I didn't have time to wait for my friends to show up. Irrespective of the fact that I had a dress button I could push on my little radio and I would let everybody know, just he's in trouble. That would do me no good. What did do me some good is a little bit of lead flying in one particular direction. I.e. the police force. So I say someone... that they are an equalizer like no other. Bullshit. They are not. They just do not show up in time. Almost always. Sometimes they do. With Whoever they're showing up to help, uh, that it's that person's good fortune. But I don't think a roll of the dice, which are loaded against you, is a particularly wise strategy for surviving violent encounters that you don't know are coming and you can only respond to with whatever you have available to you at the time. Right, and when they take 13 minutes to show up while your spouse is being raped... Are you allowed to go? Am I, am, am, am I allowed to go get a skillet? Can I get a baseball bat? Now, DPR Jones is cutting in. It's talking about, you were talking about a diamond ring, and now you're mentioning rape, and he's going to go on bloviating about how this guy's grasping at straws, just trying to think of every hypothetical conjecture that exists, you know, in a way to uh, really just exploit the conversation in some kind of uh, untoward way. But uh, let's listen carefully to your wife being raped. I'm, I'm talking about I mean, these different scenarios. The I'm talking about the exact same sort of argument well, I mean, that we, I I mean, thought that we had also... decided we would not use. Can I try, please, to bring the conversation back on track and do it this way, if I may? Both of you, that is to say you and I, seem to me to be using every single possible argument you can to avoid facing up to the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is gun possession in America. And I want to ask you two this question. Do you think that what happened in Newtown, Connecticut was a acceptable... So he was whining about the guy uh, equating rape with stealing a diamond ring, which the guy didn't do. And then to get the conversation back to something proper, you're not using all these, just every old possible thing that could happen. He goes straight to Sandy Hook. in America, and if not, what do you two propose to do about stopping this sort of thing happening in the future? Well, I have one idea, but you're not too fond of it, so I don't know if you'd accept that. 
me, uh, for you know my kind of people, we tend to uh, operate under the, under the premise, that, apparently mistakenly, that if you shoot bad people, that has a bad habit of stopping them from doing the bad things they're about to do. It's not the gun culture, DPR Jones. That's, that's one way to phrase the condition of the society. Another way to think about it is security indifferent. Sandy Hook could have been entirely prevented had the school officials actually had a care whatever about the security of the building. Mind you, just before this guy came in, they had replaced the door to beef up the security on it to make it difficult for people to get in, and the cunning thing they did in addition to that is leave it sitting right next to windows. How did the guy get into the building? Shot out the window, reached in, opened the door, and had a field day. Far better if they'd moved the windows away from that, not have so many windows in the schools. Uh, you know, if, if, if they really care about this, all they have to do is just not put in ways of entry for bad guys. Make it open only from the inside out in case there's a fire. It can be done, and quite easily. It's a little expensive, but it can be done. Notably, your solution is, no, that's not the problem. The problem isn't that, given that this state of affairs exists, why aren't people taking precautions against it by making it difficult for people to come in and shoot? No, your answer is, well, why don't we take away guns from law-abiding citizens who aren't doing anyone any harm? Of course, Sandy Hook is not acceptable, which is precisely why people like me say that private citizens who are law-abiding, and the teachers uh, included, should be able to have firearms. So if that guy comes in next time, he gets the bullets put in him more than the other people in the building, but you say no. Moreover, well, I, I, not moreover, if you're going to say is it an acceptable price to be paid for the liberties that we have, then yes. I sleep perfectly fine at night with the 35 to 40,000 people who are going to be killed this year alone in motor vehicle collisions. Not going to lose a moment's sleep over it. Perfectly easy price to pay for all the things that we want that are brought to us by having motor vehicles. Now, when there was a big drunk driving problem, what we did not do is snatch all the cars out of the way from the sober drivers. We didn't go doing that. No, we improved roadway safety by uh, improving the way the cars deform when they crash, to shed the kinetic energy so you increase the ride down time and reduce injuries, put up barriers, beefed up patrols that look out for drunk drivers. We did not go around saying, oh my god, you're a sober driver, give me your fucking keys. Similarly, with all these people who go out there doing these horrible things with firearms, the solution is not to come to people like me and say, I'm sorry, sir. Yes, yes, we know that you've never ill-used a firearm, but there are other people who do, and because they will, we're going to do the least effective thing we can think of, which is to come get your firearm that you're only ever going to use properly. How could that not possibly work? It's just a nonsensical solution. It's a nonsensical question. Of course it's not acceptable in the abstract that these children get killed, but for the price to be paid with respect to the, the freedoms and the liberties we have in this country? Easy as pie to decide, yes, perfectly acceptable. Is the hundreds of thousands of deaths per year in the United States alone from the fast food industry and the salt industry and the, and the tobacco industry uh, price to be paid? Is that an acceptable price to be paid for the freedoms for people to make their own decisions? Yes, it is. It's not pleasant. I'd rather those people didn't die. But freedoms come with prices, oftentimes that price is paid in blood. And I'm sorry if that's inconvenient for you, but you cannot put bubble wrap around the entire planet. You can't safety proof every light socket in the world, which by the way, for those of you who do, who've ever done that, you should really understand how electricity works. Just saying you're wasting your money, but anyway. These liberties that we hold so dear in the United States come with consequences. Some of which is that some innocent people are going to be killed. But that is not an argument to do, do away with the right. Or if it is, then by golly, that Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment things should just go away. Think of all the bad criminals you could catch if you could conduct unreasonable searches and seizures in their homes. Imagine all of the additional criminals we could convict if we didn't have to bother with that pesky burden of proof being proof beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury of one's peers. Imagine the extra people we could convict if we took away that petty right to have a lawyer represent you, I know you'll be against that one because that would cut in your paycheck, uh, took away the right to have a lawyer represent you at all essential and critical stages of your criminal trial. We could imprison a lot more bad people that way. The only consequence is that we have to start in imprisoning entire swaths, legions of innocent people because the same lack of, of procedural guarantees and substantive rights that we enforce in court 
that allows to convict the guilty make it that much easier to convict the innocent. Have a great day.